Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In this video, we're gonna talk about the work done by the heart. So with that, let's give it a go. So I would like to first start off by discussing what work is in physics. So let's just say we have a cart, and this cart starts off at a position of zero meters. Now let's just say we apply a force to this cart, and this force is 10 newtons. So let's just say we apply this force to the cart over a distance of 10 meters. So what was the work done on the cart? So the work done on the cart can be calculated by this equation. So the force applied to the cart over a, the distance in which it traveled. So we applied 10 newtons over a distance of 10 meters. So in other words, the work done on the cart was 100 newton meters. So for cardiovascular physiology, there's another important type of work. And this type of work is called pressure volume work. So how do we get pressure volume work? So to understand that, we start off with our previous equation, work is equal to force times displacement. So in order to understand what pressure volume work is, we have to understand what pressure is. So pressure is the amount of force applied over a certain area. So you can calculate pressure by dividing force by area. So in other words, the pressure of something is equal to the force applied to that thing over the area in which it's exerted. So we can use that equation in order to solve for force. So force is equal to pressure times area. And when we do that, we can substitute this in for force in the work equation, giving us this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to convert area and distance to SI units. And when we do that, we get this. So what we see here is that work is equal to pressure times meters squared times meters. And when we further simplify this, we see that work is equal to pressure times meters cubed. So what we get from this concept here is that pressure volume work is equal to the pressure times the difference in volume or the change in volume. So this is the equation for pressure volume work. And this is the type of work we're going to be talking about for the remainder of this video. So in order to understand the pressure volume work done by the heart during a heartbeat, we have to bring in our pressure volume curve for the left ventricle. So this is the pressure volume curve for the left ventricle, and it has a few different points. And remember, this curve basically just describes the phases of a heartbeat. So one of the important phases in the pressure volume curve is going to be this phase. So this phase is called the filling phase. So this is basically when blood enters into the left ventricle from the left atria in order to fill the left ventricle. And what we can do here is we can measure the area underneath this curve called ABC. So we're measuring the area underneath the filling phase or the ABC curve. And when we do that, this area is going to represent the work done by the blood on the heart. So why is blood doing work on the heart in this case? Well, the reason why is because blood is entering into the heart, and when it's doing this, the pressure is changing, as we see here, but not only is the pressure changing, but the volume is increasing. Therefore, what we see here is that the blood is expanding the volume, and therefore it's doing work on the heart. So what are some other things we can get from this graph? Well, another important thing is going to be the area underneath the FED curve. So it's all of this area here. And this area is going to represent the work done by the heart during systole. So this is the total work done by the heart during systole. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the net work done by the heart. And in order to do that, what we do is we take the work done by the heart during systole and subtract the work done by blood on the heart during this process. And when we do that, we get this. So the area in this whole portion here, so this red shaded portion, is going to be the net external work done by the heart. So this net external work done by the heart is the net external pressure volume work done by the heart. So what are other components of work done by the heart? Because recall, what we talked about for the last few minutes here was pressure volume work. But there are other types of work done by the heart. So what are the other types of work done by the heart? 
So the other type of work done by the heart is going to be kinetic energy. So what is kinetic energy? So in order to understand what kinetic energy is, we're going to bring in a molecule. And this molecule has a certain mass. So let's just say that this molecule is moving at a specific velocity. And because this molecule is moving, the molecule has kinetic energy. And we can calculate the kinetic energy of an object through this equation where the kinetic energy is equal to one-half times the mass of the object times the velocity squared of the object. And we can use this in order to calculate the kinetic en energy imparted by the heart on the blood. So what we do here, in order to find the total work done by the heart, we have to first use our equation where work is equal to pressure times a change in volume, but we also have to include the kinetic energy the heart delivers to the blood pumped out during systole. Because remember, the blood is going to be moving at a specific velocity, therefore the blood has kinetic energy. And since the blood has kinetic energy, this means that energy was imparted by the heart on the blood which allowed it to move. So in order to calculate the total work done by the heart during a heartbeat, we also have to include the kinetic energy of the blood. So this is the total external work done by the heart during a beat. Now it's important to realize that the kinetic energy is only going to be a small portion of work done by the heart. The majority of work done by the heart during a heartbeat is going to be in the pressure volume work. So now we're gonna talk about the total energy of a heartbeat. So what do we mean by the total energy of the heartbeat? Well, if we were to look at a heartbeat, what we would see here is that during a heartbeat, there are actually positions in which zero work is done. So what do I mean by that? Well, in order to look at this, let's look at a specific phase of the pressure volume loop, which is the isovolumic contraction. So remember, the isovolumic contraction basically means that the mitral valve and the aortic valve are closed, but the muscles inside the ventricle are contracting. But even though the muscles are contracting, the volume of the ventricle remains the same. So in other words, the heart is sort of going under a isometric contraction in which the heart muscles are contracting, but the length is remaining the same. So because of this, because there's no change in volume in this segment of the pressure volume loop, what we see here is that the work done by the heart in this specific instance is zero. But just because there's no work being done by the heart during this contraction, that doesn't mean that energy isn't being used. During the isovolumic contraction, the heart is still burning energy, and it's doing this by hydrolyzing ATP. So therefore, the heart is using energy. But where is this energy going if it's not going into work? Well, the energy is going into heat, and this heat can, is called tension heat. So what we see here is that this equation is going to calculate the total energy used by the heart during a heartbeat. So this part of the equation is the total external work, and this part of the equation is the tension heat. So tension heat refers to when a muscle breaks down ATP by maintaining an isometric contraction. So in other words, the energy released by the muscle in this case is going to be converted to heat. And we can calculate the amount of heat generated by using this equation, where K is a proportionality constant, T is the tension, and DT is the length of time of the contraction. So in other words, the greater the force of the contraction, or the greater the tension, and the greater the length of time of the contraction, the more heat that's generated. And it's important to realize that the majority of energy used in the heart is going to be seen in this tension heat. So the tension heat is going to be the majority of energy that is produced by the heart during a, a beat. So in summary, we talked about a few things. We talked about pressure volume work, and we also talked about the work done by the blood, the work done by the heart, and we also talked about the net external work. We also talked about what the total work done by the heart is by including the kinetic energy component. 
And we also talked about the total energy that's used by the heart and an important concept called tension heat. So I hope this video helped you understand work done by the heart, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.